Okay, so um, I'm going to be talking through how to put a book dummy together in a number of short clips because I think it's a, an easy way to do it. Um, the first thing to just quickly summarize is that if you want to make a photo book, it's really important that you're coming from a really strong beginning point, as in you've made a significant amount of work. Uh, I think a lot of people want to rush to try and make a photo book. And, you know, I've taught on some courses where the very first unit, a first year student, is made, asked to make a photo book. And to me, that's just absolutely crazy. There's an element of, yeah, you know, Quentin Tarantino, if you want to learn to make a, a film, the best way to learn to make a film is to try and make a film, sure. If you want to try and create something um, strong, obviously you need to, there's a lot to learn. So hopefully just this little video now will just take you through a, a few things to consider putting a book dummy together. Okay, so what you're looking at here is my last book, which is In a Guarded England. Um, it's a hardback printed book. It's got a nice tipped in photo on the cover here. Some nice gold foil text and some uh, gold foil text on the spine. It's printed on like a, a silk paper. Uh, there's lots of different ways of um, different paper stocks you can print on, obviously. But I kind of went for this nice, nice silk because I thought it had a nice element for me where you know, the photos were kind of shiny, but if you can see it wasn't shiny on the paper. There's something you can do with varnish to get this effect, but it costs a lot more money. Whereas I found just doing a silk paper, I had that finish. I didn't have to, to, to go that route. Uh, obviously, when you varnish photos as well, sometimes the books can stick together because the people making the books, yeah, don't wait for them to dry. So that can happen too. Um, now, the beginning. So forget all this. Take that away, you want that. Um, this is what I'd say, first of all, you need a first edit, okay? So you need a first edit of that work. And by a first edit, I mean swooping through all the photographs that you've made and hopefully coming up with, you know, a collection of photographs to work from, okay? Now, I think a good starting point is getting down to 300. That might sound like a lot, but some projects, you know, you, you'd be shooting a lot, a lot of work. Um, so how will you choose these photos? Well. You can start off by choosing photos that you feel, you know, have some great composition or an interesting subject matter. Um, you might think there's maybe a chance moment or something happens that's sort of spontaneous that you didn't plan and that kind of works. Um, sometimes maybe there's like a narrative element that's important for the story and you're thinking, hey, you know, that could really work for my story because that's sort of saying what I want to say. Um, sometimes you can just have interesting lighting or atmospherics, you know, that could be purely enough. Um, sometimes there's sort of symmetry or mirroring going on. So look, you know, here's a shot that wasn't even used in the book and it's the woman looking at the man, but look, the painting of the woman is also looking at the man. You know, that didn't even make the edit, but yeah, again, it's one of the reasons why I ended up in my maybe pile. Okay. And the bottom line is sometimes there's photographs where you just have a gut feeling. You're just like, yeah, that's an in. So, um, I would suggest printing these photographs like these are just printed on paper. Yeah, and there's loads of people you can use online. Some some people do free prints somehow. I don't know how they manage that, but you know, printing up a bunch of small six by four inch prints is not so difficult. A little tip for the film photographers: um, you're going to scan these in. Do the highest resolution scans you can before doing any photoshopping to them, because if you if you spend all that time photoshopping a lower risk scan, you're just going to have to redo it again when you do them higher res for, potentially for print sales. So next up, uh, you're into your second edit. So this is cool, man. This is a box that had Christmas cards in. I thought, oh, that's quite nice. So I stuck a photo on it. It's nice to recycle. So there we go. So that's my, that's why I kept my final edit in. And this is the exact edit uh, that you'll see in my book. Now, to get there, I had to go through the 300 pile and start being kind of very, very critical. And I think a good um, dictum to think about here is you're only as strong as your weakest image. So you really want to sort of try and try and pin it down. Um, for me, with my last book, it was very much trying to think about visual style. Obviously, it was shot over 20 years. My style sort of changed little bits here and there. So overall, it's trying to think about images that kind of work together. Um, so there we go. So that's how, I mean, I picked it down and I aimed to get around 70 to 80 photographs. I thought that was a good amount for, for a book. In previous, uh, my last book, The Unseen, it was it was 276 pages. It was a lot of pages. Whereas um, In a Garden of England is only 124 pages. And I think it's a kind of a nice, a nice amount to, 
nice amount of pages and a photo book. Um, yeah. So then once you've got your second edit, um, you're thinking, yeah, this is pretty tight now. I've maybe got 80 photos. This could be it. You now need to start thinking about sequencing. And sequencing, well, this is where, well, this is what took me a free, few years because, yeah, anyway, we'll get into that. Sequencing. So now you've gone through your first edit. Um, you've picked out some photographs that you think, yeah, this could be a good selection for the book. Uh, but now you're going to have to sequence them, okay? Now, sometimes this can be done because the project itself, as you could say, it's like time-based. So it's over a certain time chronologically. So that takes care of the narrative and that maybe takes care of the sequencing. Um, sometimes the work's in chapters because the work's been made in different ways or in different locations. Um, but, you know, sometimes work can be made with a certain conceptual reason, like it's all made in certain cities, blah, blah, blah. See, I don't do that. Though. I like to create sequences that have a sense of narrative. Um, in a garden to England, the timeline is all over the place. Um, I'm trying to kind of create my own sort of narrative through the photographs that I've taken. But I'm also trying to be aware of kind of how other people would be seeing those photographs and the read they might get from them. It's pretty wild. Like, I'm almost trying to imagine myself being different people seeing the work and seeing how they would also sort of uh, perceive it. So, yeah. So sometimes trying to create a sequence, it might be related to um, the sort of subject matter that you're looking at in each photo. And sometimes you might need a certain picture because it helps to kind of progress the story. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of laying these out. Um, and this is sort of representing kind of the first page, double page here, the second page, and then the third page. And on the, on the sort of third sort of double page spread you see that there's now two photographs um and that's what i was trying to kind of do throughout the book a number of times there's these sort of two photographs together and that was done with you know a conscious a conscious decision on my part um so yeah i won't get a little bit into too too much about that but with this kind of diptych i liked it because it's a couple expecting a baby and it's an older couple who are holding a little Kind of wooden house like it is their baby okay and that was my reasoning for putting it together um, but interestingly as i showed this work to people i, I showed uh, a, a student who's kind of very perceptive and saw things in their own way and, they, and i said oh you see what i'm doing and they're like, oh yeah yeah i love it the red and white vehicles and i was like what and i was like oh yeah no way check it out so yeah in each photograph there's a red and white motorbike and a red and white boat and i i'd not consciously acknowledge that obviously maybe on a subconscious level i'd seen it and that's another reason why i was putting them together but for me it was all about this narrative of uh being a parent and that kind of idea so there we go so yeah so once you're rolling here you've got your pictures which you're kind of using to almost imagine how it would look on a double page spread you know and a cool thing you can try and do even with photos like this is as you turn the page, try and imagine what it would be like seeing that photograph first. Or is this one open, seeing that photograph first? And there you go. Now, obviously, you haven't got space to do that here. But what I would do is actually I'd use a floor or a large table and I'd lay them out. And you can kind of really get into trying to, to sequence these. And this is another reason why you really need to print your little photos. Um, they can be crap, literally. You know what the photos look like. You're not going to show these off to anyone. It's just the idea for you to have a physical element to kind of go through and sequence from. Um, one final thing is sometimes you'll be going through this edit and you'll be thinking, yeah, it's OK, it's OK, but something's not quite right. Or sometimes, you know, the photos that you pulled out, well, maybe there's a photo in here that really helped to add another element to the story or something that you were missing. And then that goes back in and that can kind of help you to kind of get across the narrative you're trying to put across in your photo book. So this is the thing you're kind of wanting to be aiming for, which is making a, a book dummy. Now, um, this is the actual book, how it looks. So again, let's just take that away for now. I'll pop it on the side. Um, these are pretty rough and ready, okay? Like the early ones, I don't even bother putting a cover on. All I'm really interested in is trying to see how it works as a sequence. Okay, so obviously the text changed a lot. You know, and in the beginning here, look, I had, this was one of my leading kind of spreads here. Let me just slide that up. This was one of my leading kind of spreads in the book. But funny enough, um, that ended up at the back of the book. 
Um, so there we go. But it was just trying to have a sense of scale, you know, by printing. I mean, this is falling apart now, but like by printing the dummy, you can kind of see kind of how big the work's going to look. But very importantly as well, the text. One of the main mistakes I see um, students make when making book dummies is they print the text far too big. Um, because they see it on screen, they think, oh, that's really big. And you print it and hell, man, it ends up looking like a children's book. OK, so it's worthwhile printing the dummy just to get a sense of scale. Also, you don't have to print the dummy. You could make a word, uh, a, a template from Word, paste that in and print it to hopefully the same scale and size that you're going to print it. And you can also do it that way. Uh, one thing to note as well, um, this first dummy I printed, actually, it's on some 160 GSM paper and even on like a crappy photocopier. Um, the standard paper might be 80 or 90 GSM, believe it or not, just printing on a heavier weight paper. Wow, the colours look so much better. It does print a lot better just on the heavier weight paper, even on a really kind of rough and ready um, photocopier. Now, I said that this was falling apart because once I got to the stage where I'd sawn down the spine and I put some PVA glue, I just kind of left it. I didn't actually get round to binding it because I made changes and I was off the next one so the next one's obviously a lot smaller um i just made it so again i could think about the sequencing i knew roughly how big i was going to print the book uh, the one thing i changed just to make it survive a bit is there's some leftover muslin cloth from when the girls were babies and it's quite cool stuff it took the pva glue really well and it's really solid it's gone really hard now the pva glue's on it but um it looks like crap but again i don't care about that um, I just wanted to find a way of putting the dummy together so that I could, you know, flick through it and have a look. Now, getting a little bit nearer. So I made this dummy up um, and it's a bit more legit. It's on some, uh, I don't know, kind of proper um, sort of book binders. I think Buckram here. Um, the, obviously the cover photo changed completely and because of the nature of it, I couldn't do any tipping in myself. I didn't know how to do that. Um, I've got a nice uh, end paper here, which is in cream. Uh, but the idea was is that I made this to try and enter <clears throat> some uh, sort of book dummy award. I only entered one, and uh, I didn't didn't get anywhere. But that's all right. And the thing is, is um, in an ideal world, you might want to make a book dummy like this because maybe you're gonna try and take it around and show publishers to have them sort of make the book. But in my experience. Yeah, that's, it might not be worth the hassle, and you might be better, better just doing it yourself. So there you go. So yeah, but it does look quite nice. But obviously, um, again, the photo quality isn't great. It's just printed, again, on a bit, bit rough and ready, but it's on a heavier weight paper of 160 GSM. You know, the finish is not too bad. Um, and the idea is you're just trying to get, again, a feeling of, of how the book's going to look. Now, this might sound a bit wackadoo, but... Even before I got to this process, I tried, when I had a quiet moment, if I was on a train, I'd sort of close my eyes and I'd imagine how the book would look. I'd imagine holding different sizes. I'd imagine what the cover cloth would be like. You know, I'd try and visualise it and hold it in my mind. And the idea there is I was kind of making sort of design changes without even physically making the book, if that makes sense. Just trying to project and imagine it. Um, this is one of the final dummies before the book was finished and you can see here again it's got the muslin along the spine which looks really crap but what i did was i actually printed what i thought the cover image was going to be now obviously the cover image changed but again a thing i haven't covered using indesign yet but when you make a body of a book the main text this is one document and your cover is a separate document so what I did was I just, in photo, uh, Photoshop, I made up a cover, the front and back. I didn't even bother putting the back on it, but I made up the cover and I wrapped that around the front. And what I did again, which is quite fun, I don't know if you can see it here, but I scanned in the kind of cloth type to try and get that grain. I tipped in using some debossing the image to give it a sense. Can you see that highlight just there? To give it a sense that it's kind of 3D. And I made the inner guard of the England text. Um sort of debossed as well and I did some playing around putting some texture on it to make it look a bit like it was gold foil text that had been tipped in. And now I stick this next to the final book. You know man, it's not too bad, right? Obviously the book's a little bit bigger. Um, the actual printing size of the paper was 280 mil. But once you factor in the hardback cover, it ends up being more like about 296 mil. So roughly the size of a vinyl record. Um, 
So again, when it came to, you know, thinking about how the text might look, you know, there's, there's that one on that page. And then uh, there's that one on that page. And I think what I did was I stopped that being bold. I thought that was too distracting having the title in bold. So I just made it all sort of not bold, just in italics. So there we go. So anyway, dummies. But the thing now is, how do you make them? Okay, so you need to make a dummy to get to this point. So, um, you want to make a book dummy, you're probably going to need something called a book press. You can go on eBay and you can find them like for like some for silly money. The cheapest one I think I found was like 50, 60 quid. Um, they're pretty heavy, so to post like kind of stuff. So I just made one. So what you're looking at here is actually two chopping boards from like, I think, Home Bargains or Range or how you could pick them up from a second hand shop. They don't have to be or a charity shop. They don't have to be um, the same. These are. Um, I drilled a hole in each corner I bought a nice bolt and a little wing nut here and a washer and then that's enough that's my that's my little uh, my book press um, oh one thing that I forgot to mention obviously my book is square it wasn't printed on square paper I ended up finding a little copy shop uh, locally like it just an independent copy shop and they'd trim it down for me just for like one pound fifty um, it wouldn't be perfect. Um, sometimes it wouldn't even come back square. But again, I didn't care. I just wanted to get it roughly so that I could kind of see what was going on. So the first thing you need to do is uh, carefully uh, get it in here. Now, I think you'll be able to see from uh, from the book dummy here. This is one I kind of tried to do before and I didn't end up putting anything along the spine. So it kind of came apart. But this is the kind of very final um, version of the book dummy. So what we do first of all, I mean, it's, it's, a, I've got to say, I'll be honest with you. It's a, it's a state. It is a state, but look, yours is going to be much better and much neater and it wouldn't have like been done once already. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to push this nice and down, deep in, tighten up these wing nuts. That's it. There we go. And then you're going to take, yeah, I haven't mentioned what's on the side here. This is it, man. Like some people go to town, they're sewing in signatures, needle and thread, all this lovely stuff. Man, this is it. <laughs> I couldn't find my PVA glue. So this is the girl's PVA glue. That's going to be fine. I've got some of these just to clip along the edge, a little hacksaw and this nice little brush. And that's it. Um, so you've got it in here. You can see how wonky it is, man. They're supposed to line up. Never mind. Um, here, there we go. I don't know what quite happened there. That's a bit better, isn't it? So there we go. So I tighten that off. Should I hold it a bit nearer? Maybe I'll zoom in a bit. Let's just do that. There we go. So once I've made these nice and tight, the first thing I'm gonna do is get my little hacksaw. I mean, I've already kind of sawed in a little bit here, you can see, but I'm just gonna go in again, give it some of that. Now what you're doing here is you're making these little grooves for the PVA glue to kind of sink into so it sort of gets more of a grip on the paper sort of the PVA will channel into these and you'll be uh, you'll be good to go just like that this is where I need a here's one I made earlier maybe. right but anyway you get the idea boff, boff, boff. Boff, boff, boff. now I'm not sure how well this is actually going to take the glue because it's already been glued a bit but Anyway, just for demonstration purposes. There we go. Right, good. Now, now I've got that like that. I'm going to pull the book dummy out a little bit more, just so I can get the pages to bend a bit, and you'll see why in a minute. So I think that might be enough. Yes, yeah, so this isn't going to bend exactly how I'd want it to. Sort of. For the demonstration we just have to use your imagination okay so this has already had some glue on it before but ideally what would happen is you can see it roughly here a little bit you can bend it and the, the pages would fan out a bit now it's not quite doing it here because they're kind of glued together already a bit but if it wasn't like that you'd see all the pages would fan out so the next thing i do i get my glue i'm gonna stand this up There we go. Let's put a bit of glue on here. Right, so 
What you want to do is you want to bend it one way and glue along, then bend it the other way. So I'm going to push it as far as I can over and just dollop this on along the edge, like that. Um, and again, you know, I could have done this a bit better if I just poured the glue into a tray, but again, it doesn't matter. There's less waste this way. So yeah, buff, buff, buff. Um, maybe what I'll do is, uh, I'll just skip all this perhaps. So you've been bending all one way down the spine that way. I'm just speeding it up. And then you do it the same, you bend it back. Now these pages, because they've been glued already, they're not quite fanning out how I want. But yeah, if it wasn't um, already sort of semi-done, the paper would fan out really nicely and you get a nice, nice line on it all along the edge. And then once you're happy with the glue, at that, that stage, you just want to unscrew the wing nuts again and just push it in a little bit tighter, a little bit more to the edge. That's it. There we go. There we go, just like that. And then tighten it up. And there we go, you just leave that to dry. And then the next phase would be, you could put something along the spine. Um, you could put, like I said, I've got some muslin that I'd sort of trim and put down. You could just put some paper along. Or if you have a cover, you could then sort of glue your cover on that way, wrapping around the book. And that's it, man. It's, it's pretty simple. Like, like I said, it's not going to kind of win any beauty contests, but you're doing it so you can get an understanding of how your book will look at that size how the photos will look at that size, uh, how the text will look at that size, how it works sequencing, looking through the book rather than just scrolling for a PDF on your computer. Um, books are tangible things, man. It makes sense to try and have part of the process also being tangible, whether it's working with small prints or making a book dummy. Okay, okay I'm aware that was kind of crap. So um, I'm gonna make the dummy for my next book. I just happen to have that lying around. There we go. So um, this is a book I'll be making of work shot in the Texas Hill Country from 2006 to 2007. Um, it's been trimmed down. Obviously it was printed on A3 paper. It's now been trimmed down. I must say, they've done quite a good job. I don't know if you can see that. It looks pretty square to me. It's pretty good. Um, that's spooky. It's ex nearly the exact width for the chopping board. Isn't that cool? Anyway. Um, these photos aren't really photoshopped at all. Um, it's very much just sort of preliminary thinking about aiding the sequencing. Obviously, I'm happy with the design. I'm happy with the size of the text and everything like that, because it's basically going to be a, a used in the previous book in a garden to England as a template. OK, now this is where I'm going to mess this up. It's going to be beautiful. Right. Here we go. So um, one thing that I've made in the past a mistake of is I, I put glue down the wrong wrong uh, spine so I put the spine in the wrong place so the book would open back to front that was a that was a fun night um, so yeah here we go so this this edge here that's going to be the spine so let's see how bad it can do this now it might seem to the untrained eye like I'm using a proper work surface I'm not I'm using the surface from my pinball machine from 1978 and as you might be aware pinball machines are on a gradient so actually it's on a bit of a lean so this will probably make it a bit more difficult. And how am I going to do this? Let's just get that there. Maybe I need to really loosen these off. I can tell it's been a, a little while since I've done this. Right. There we go. So I've kind of got it in there. Now I'm sure there's a smart way of making this all level off. I don't know what that way is. Um, feel free to let me know. Um, yeah. How's a better way of doing this? Maybe if I, you know, like newsreaders do it. Maybe if I do a bit of that. Is that a good idea? Is that good? Do you think that's going to do it? Something. Yeah, that's pretty good. Who would have thought? Right. Um, the few pages at the back have slipped down a bit. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's it's hard to tell, but I think that's pretty good. It's been pretty good there. Yeah, you know what? Apart from that page slipping down, 
for some wacky reason. That chair looks quite good. So yeah, it's important to get this all kind of nice and straight because once you start hacking into it and putting glue on it, it's going to be very different. So there we go. So this is for sawing, first of all. A few pages at the back, a little bit wonky, but again, this isn't to show anyone, just you guys, just for you, okay? So yeah, I'm not going to be attempting to take this anywhere to show people who supposedly are interested in photo books because I'm making it. Um, I don't need to get funding for it because I'm going to crowdfund it. Um, again, this is purely a technical exercise for me to see how the book is going to look when I start flicking for it and other people start flicking for it. But you know, maybe you'd want to make a pretty book. You could show it off, but um, my end game is to make lots of these books and I wouldn't be doing it in this process. So let's have a look at that. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? So here's the scary bit. I'm going to take my little hacksaw. You feel that tension, tension. I think it's sticking out a bit too far, so I'm not getting it. What's it? Let the saw do the work. Let the saw do the work. There we go. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful. There we go. So maybe I need to pause this because this is going to just take forever. What do you reckon? I do the whole thing. I could tell you a story. So uh, me and my family, we like to rescue uh, squirrels from the local park. And uh, my wife's just going to bring them in now. The lovely little critters. Are you going to see them? Um, no, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. But um, it, could be, it could be nice. It could be nice. Um... Yeah, Hacksaw, I can't remember where I got it. I think I bought, like, a lot of this kit, this whole book binding kit I got on eBay for, like, super budget amount, and to be honest, I don't use most of it. I literally just use the saw and the brush, and that's enough for me. Um, I'm kind of, this is kind of self-taught in a way. I, I, I saw a great book binder, Tun van der Heiden, when he made my book, The Unseen. I saw him put a dummy together in a similar way. And it's funny because up until that point, I thought dummies were things that you had to use, like needle and thread. You had to pour over. You had to be perfect, everything perfect. And the thing is, is that, yeah, if you're making just one book, like one book dummy or an artist run of like 10 books you all hand make, you know, that's perfect, right? But for me, like I want to print 500, I want to print 1,000, I want to, you know, have a run of books. I'm certainly not going to make them all. So, um, yeah. Oh, look at that. It's getting nuts. Let's try that. Nearly there. So I guess I'm doing about centimetre intervals on this. Don't know if that's coming from the top video. I can't actually see it. But I get the idea. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. A bit back and forth. There we go. Wow. Now, I don't know how deep that is. Seems like two mil, a couple of mil. You can make that out there. Just some little grooves. Now, what went wrong in the last video you didn't see? See how I'm pushing this now? And you can see it... Um, where is it? You can see it kind of bending a bit. So now when I come to do the glue, this should be much, much better. So I'm going to use this uh, PVA glue here. It's just from my girls from doing crafts and stuff. But it dries clear and it's permanent. What's not to like, right? Um, doesn't, yeah, it's all good. So I'm going to bend it this way. Load up the brush, not too much. I don't want to do too much because if it drips down it can make the um make the paper kind of warp a bit especially if it's very thin paper this is not very good paper i've made this dummy on i didn't again like it's very light gsm paper probably 80 90 gsm it was cheap but it was just to again see that for me the sequencing is very important and it's a way of kind of not having to imagine it anymore but actually hold it in your hands so I'm just trying to get the glue kind of into the grooves, bending one way, so that's it, buff, 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 bend it that way, get a nice amount of glue on there, and I'll turn it round, I'm going to bend it back, like that, buff, 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 and uh, yeah, I'm guessing that's pretty good. Seems pretty cool, seems like a decent amount of glue on there. You know, it didn't take much. Um, now, what I want to do is I'm going to loosen it off, just push it in a little bit more. 
make it nice and tight. So here we go. Scary part, eh? Right, let's make sure these are all loose. Good, I'm just going to try and wiggle it in a bit. There we go, good. As you probably wear most glues, like they kind of work best under pressure. Like as photographers, right? Under pressure. So um, yeah, so there we go. So putting a bit of pressure on that. Um, I don't know if I've done this before, if it's helped or it's made it worse, but hey, I'll have another go. I've got these little clips here. And my plan is just to sort of clip those along the edge, just make it nice and tight. So let's have a little go at that. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. So, you know, it's, you see it's starting to wobble a little bit along. I don't know if this is going to help. It's probably going to squeeze a lot of the glue out, but hell, let's just give it a go, right? If it doesn't work, hey, we'll learn and we'll have another go. Wow, it was amazing. I don't know if you saw that, it just spinned off right, right into the corner there. That's quite good. Okay, so there we go. Got some more of these just down there. I'll grab them. Oh, this is this is by the way the bag of all the stuff that I bought that I don't use. Um, it came with the kit. If you see anything here and you're like, hey Ed, <laughs> you should actually be really using that. That's a really good tool. Um, it's probably because I don't know what to do with them, but hey, I found this method's worked okay for me so far. Uh, punk rock, right? So there we go. So there are my little clips on. Um, I'll leave that to dry. Uh, here's all this other gubbins. That looks nice, doesn't it? Um, tacky, tacky glue. There we go. But um, yeah, that's it. So that'll dry. Oh, that's cool. Not thimble. Um, that will dry. And uh, yeah, and then I'll probably, well, I probably won't actually probably won't do anything, but maybe I'll stick a bit of cloth along the edge, the muslin, and maybe a bit more paper just to make that spine a little bit stronger. And that'll be enough, man. That'll be enough for me to flick through it and have a little look. So yeah, cool.